to you today I've been told that you are the only way my heart is hurting I have no more tears all that's left is nothing nothing but emptiness Hello, family. This is Pastor T. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Uh, you know, I'm really excited that you've joined us online. Would you do me a huge favor? If this programming adds value to your life, if you're excited about what you're going to hear, would you press the like and the share button prophetically, knowing that today you're going to hear a word. Today, uh, worship is going to take place and you're going to experience transformation. Again, you know, a couple of years ago, I would have never imagined canceling church and just doing church completely online. But times have changed, and we've got to learn how to pivot. So thank you for joining us online. And right now, we're going to begin our worship in the way we normally do, and that is with the period of intercession where we center ourselves and we settle ourselves and we connect with God. So take the moment to get in a position so you can intercede, so you can hear God clearly this day. Good afternoon, G2. Good afternoon. We're so glad you're able to join us virtually. I'll be reading Psalms 100. Shout for the joy. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. 
enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks unto him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Just as Pastor T just stated, we are doing things in an unconventional way, but it's still the same God that we serve. And here at G2, we start every single service with intercession and prayer. So we know that you're at home. You might be at work. You might be in your car. So I'm going to ask that you get your loved ones, quiet everything around you, and settle yourself as we get ready to prepare our hearts and minds to receive the word of the Lord. Most holy and gracious God, we thank you for your unfailing love towards us, God. We thank you, oh God, because you love us enough to see about each and every one of our needs, Lord. The things that we're not even aware that we need, you have already made provision. And so, God, we thank you for the faith and the hope that you put down on the inside of us. We thank you, God, because you've had a good track record with us. You've never failed us. You've always come through right on time. And for that, we thank you. We thank you, God, that you know everything about us, and yet you still love us enough to use us. You know everything about us, and yet you still find a way to be a provider to be a healer, to be a way maker, to be a protector, to be a sustainer, to be our banner. And for that, God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that we have enough sense just to come before you just the way that we are. We know that people say, come as you are. And we know that's just not about clothes, but just come as you are in your spirit. Some of us are broken. Some of us are wounded. Some of us are in need. Some of us are in a good place. But your, your word says to just come as you are, you that are heavy laden. And so, God, we come before you bringing all of our burdens and our cares and our worries and our, our anxiousness and our doubts and our depression. We come before you as little children just saying, God, just help us. We don't have to know what the end is going to be because we know the end is going to be well because we serve a God that's victorious. So while we're in that load of our, while we're in that valley moment, Lord, we ask that you'll just have something to push us a little bit further down the way. Lord, I pray that every man and woman and child that has taken the time right now to just sit in your presence, even if it's uncomfortable, God, I pray that you bless them. I pray, Lord, that whatever that household needs that is represented on today, you bless it, God. Do a miracle. Show up and show out like never before so that they can only give credit where credit is due, and that is unto you. Father, we thank you for everything that you have done in our lives, Lord. We thank you for where we find ourselves right now. And God, if we're in a good place, we thank you. If we're in an okay place, we still thank you. Because your word says to be content in whatever state you find yourself in. So help us to be content wherever we find ourselves right now, Lord. We give this service back to you. Even though we're at home, even though we're at work, even though we're in our cars or wherever we may find ourselves, we give this service back to you. We thank you for your many blessings. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and thank God. Amen, amen. We're grateful for what God has done. Those that are watching online, which is everybody today, we're grateful that you could join us. And if you don't mind, type in the chat where you are right now. God has done it for me. Amen. Even in these moments where things seem crazy and the world is topsy-turvy, God is still an awesome God and he's still making ways and opening doors and doing great things for us. We here at G2 know that the presence of the Lord is here. And those that are part of the G2 family, you know that where you are, the presence of the Lord that's here is also where you are. So that means there's liberty where you are. You are free to worship. You're free to praise God. You're free to lift your hands. Go ahead and share this video, like this video. Let's take worship around the globe, amen. We want to invite you to join us in worship. We sing praises to the name of the Most High God, for he's worthy. He keeps doing great things for us. Where you are, you can sway, you can clap your hands with us. We want to worship the Lord. Yeah. We sing praises to the name of the Lord. Yeah, yeah. I sing 
praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Everybody, let's sing. I, I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. We give you praise. Oh, Lord. Say for your name, for your name is great and greatly great to be praised. Oh, that home we sing praises to your name. us to triumph. No matter what comes against us, he causes us to triumph. If you don't mind just where you are, just begin to declare victory in your situation, in your home, in your body, in your finances, wherever you need the victory. God has given us that because it belongs to him. Oh yeah. 
Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. And who will stand against our King? No one can. No one will. Oh, oh, victory belongs to Jesus. The victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 the victory belongs to Jesus. The victory belongs to him. Let's say, who can stand? Who can stand against the Lord? No one, no one can, no one, no one will. Who will stand against our King? Who will stand against the King? No one can, no one can, no one will. No one will. Oh, oh, oh. say it where you are. Oh. Declare it in yourself. Victory belongs to Jesus. It belongs. Victory belongs to him. That means nobody can take it away from him. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh, oh. the victory, yeah. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs. Victory belongs to him. Let's go back to the top. Everybody say, Who can stand? Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one can. Come on, sing it. No one will. No one will. There's nothing that can overtake you. Who against the king? No one can. No one can. No one will. Oh, 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 oh. oh believe it. Oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. I believe it. Oh, 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 victory, yeah. The victory belongs to him. Let's say it in harmony. Oh, 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 the victory belongs to Jesus. Come on, say it with conviction. We cry. Say you will, you will deliver. You're a provider. I find my victory in you. You're forever victorious. Oh, type in the chat. Forever we win. I find my victory. Come one more time. You will deliver. The Lord's a provider. A provider. Oh, and I find my victory. I find, my I find it in, in you, you because you're forever victorious. We won't lose with God on our side. I find my victory. Oh, they say you will deliver. You're a provider. You'll make a way. 
Praise Him because He's given us the victory. We bless you for the victory, oh God. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Bless you for the victory. Oh, how we praise and magnify the name of our God. He is good and gracious and kind and loving to us. Let me again say thank you for joining us today online. Uh, again, I could not have imagined two and a half years ago uh, ever just canceling worship and just saying everything would be completely online. But these are different times in which we live. And so I am thankful you taking the time to join us today. Listen, family, I want to encourage you uh, to join us on Tuesdays for our time of prayer. Amen. At Tuesday mornings at 7 a.m. for our time of prayer. So make sure you set your alarm, you lock it in, and you join us for a time of intercession on a Tuesday morning. You know, the saying is Mondays can be rough. And so join us on Tuesdays. We can help you get through the remainder of your week. There's going to be a few more things that are going to be shared today uh, concerning some upcoming events. Uh, but don't forget next Sunday. Next Sunday is Family and Friends Day. So we want to encourage you to invite your family, your friends, your neighbors. You know, I'm kind of old school. And uh, in old school, we had a thing called frangelism. Uh, where you invited your friends, your relatives, your associates, and your neighbors. And so we want to encourage you to in invite all of them to join us on the fifth Sunday at 2 p.m. as we worship our God together and celebrate his goodness towards us. Amen. Amen. So we give God glory and praise today. Again, I'm thankful that you've taken the time to join us. If you have not 
I just ask that you do me just one huge favor, and that is would you take the time to hit that like, uh, that share button, uh, no matter where you're watching, on Facebook or on YouTube. It helps us to come up in other person's feed. And so if you're being uh, blessed by our time together, if you find value in our time together, would you make sure that you share that with someone else? Amen. Listen, would you join me in a word of prayer as, I, as we consecrate our time together? Lord, we love you, and we honor you today, and we thank you for just who you are to us. You are so good. Whether we are in, in person or online, you are good, and we bless you. So, God, we ask now that you'll bless these few moments together in your word. We want you to get the glory out of our time together. We want you to be lifted and magnified and praised and adored. In Jesus' name, amen. I cannot move forward without at first thanking those who've made this possible, our time to come together, our worship team and, and our AV team and musicians and others who've assisted in helping us pull all this together. So, you know, I want to begin with uh, taking you back uh, just a little bit. You know, when I was, uh, when I was growing up, uh, my father, um, he loved to watch uh, westerns. And so I want to begin in that era. Um, so there's a story of this, uh, of this cowboy who was sleeping out one night in the Old West, and uh, he noticed uh, something moving at the end of his bunk. So he grabbed his six-shooter and he shot quickly. And to his dismay, he shot a hole in his foot. How many times have you and I shot a hole in our foot because we've moved too quickly? We made rash decisions that we later on regretted. There's a story that I think uh, illustrates that, and I think it can help us uh, because I think it offers us some insightful information on how to process making the right decision. So join me, if you will, in the book of Ruth, chapter 1. The book of Ruth, chapter 1, there in the Old Testament, the book of Ruth, chapter 1. Now, as you're turning to that in your Bible or you're locating it on your device, while we're going through this message, if it is a blessing to you, if you agree with it, I want you to talk back to me online like you would if you were in the sanctuary. Hit those likes, those loves, uh, drop a little fire in the chat. Ruth chapter 1, the book of Ruth chapter number 1, and beginning with verse 1. And here's how it reads. Now it came about in the days when the judges governed that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the land of Moab with his wife and two sons. The name of this man was Imelech, the name of his wife, Naomi, and the names of their uh, sons were Milan and Kilion, Epaphrites of Bethlehem in Judah. Now they entered the land of Moab and remained there. Then Imelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They took for themselves Moabite women as wives. The name of one was Ophrah, the, the name of the other was Ruth, and they lived there about ten years. Then both Milan and Kilion also died, and the woman was bereft of her two children and her husband. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you uh, today again. So let me set the context for this, uh, this passage. We learn in the very opening words of verse 1 that it takes place during the time of the judges. And that's interesting because uh, the period of Judges um, was described in this fashion. Judges 17 verse 6 says, it was a time when everyone did what was right in their own eyes. It was a day of radical individualism. You know, that day has dawned again. 
Because we're living in a day of radical individualism where, where people are simply doing whatever feels good and whatever feels right. There is no sense of community anywhere. There's no sense of obligation to the larger group. It is all about what I want to do and how I want to do it. That We have entered into an era of radical individualism where it could be said even of this age, and every man does what is right in their own eyes. That is, the, that is the times in which this text takes place. Now, most of the time as we come to the book of Ruth, we spend our time focusing upon uh, uh, Ruth and, and Naomi and their relationship. But before we even get to the beauty of that relationship and, uh, and, 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 the, and the greatness of Ruth, we've got to look at the story of Imelech because it is his actions that eventually gives us the story of Ruth. When you and I consider this, I want us to think about it in a couple of ways. Number one, I want you and I to consider the choices he made. The Bible says that he was there in the land of Bethlehem of Judah, which literally means house of bread, but there was a famine, which means there was no bread in the bread house. Nevertheless, it was the place of promise. It was a place God promised to bless his people. And so when you read of, of Imelech's story, the thing that you'll have to consider first is that in the choices that he made, he learned and he lived and walked by sight and not by faith. He allowed what was taking place around him to make a decision to move his family to an entire different area. Moab was a cursed city. It was a cursed place, but he chose to move his family there because he was walking by sight and not by faith. And how often do you and I make choices and decisions because things don't look right? Can I tell you, you and I as believers can never afford to make such decisions because our job is to walk by faith that even if it doesn't look right, you and I have got to learn how to trust God. Those of you who are listening to me online, can you type into the chat, I'm learning how to trust God. It's a process. It is not easy. You have to learn how to trust God. and You have to learn how to walk by faith and not by sight. Because sometimes what you see can deceive you. So not only does he make the choice to walk by sight and not by faith, but he also betrayed the name that he carried. What do I mean by that? Well, his name, literally, Imelech means God is king. But he does not live as if God is king. And how many of us bear the name believer and Christian but do not behave as if we are living up to the name we carry? He, his name means God is king, but he took his destiny in his own hands. His name means God is king, but he decided that God wasn't moving fast enough and things weren't going according to his plan. So he uproots his family and moves them to Moab. How many of us betray our name? We call ourselves Christians and believers, and oftentimes the way we act betrays the name we carry. So he walked by sight and not by faith. He, he did not, uh, he betrayed the name he carried. But thirdly, he abandoned the place of promise. You see, Bethlehem of Judah was the place and the land where God had promised to bless his people. And he chose to uproot his family and move them to Moab. Now, it was only 50 miles from Moab from Bethlehem of Judah to Moab. It was only 50 miles, physically 50 miles, but it was a million miles away and outside of God's will. And what may seem like a short distance can take you so far out of the will of God. We read the story oftentimes in Luke 15 of the prodigal son, and the Bible says he went into a far country. 
From there, he wasted the substance with riotous living. Fifty miles can be a far country. That if there's any place that takes you outside of the will of God, it is too far. And though it was only 50 miles, it was a million miles away from God's place of promise. And so his choices, his choices had consequences. And so do all of ours. Our choices all have consequences. So take a look at the consequences. And here's where it gets scary. Because when you read the story, you'll discover there are several things and consequences that resulted from this move that he makes. And that is, number one, write it down. They missed the blessing of the Lord being out of position. Because when you read what happens in verses 1 through 5, he takes his family out of Bethlehem of Judah. He moves them to Moab. But what happens in verse 6 is interesting because verse 6 says that God visited his people in Bethlehem of Judah. He moved to Moab, but God blessed his people in Bethlehem of Judah, which means he had moved his family out of the place of blessing. How many times do you and I make rash decisions, quick decisions, because of our fear, because we are afraid, because we are uncertain, because we are unsure, and because we have chosen to live by sight and not by faith? Because when you walk by faith, you know that even if it is a famine, it is better to be in a famine with God than out of a famine without God. But here's another thing I think you should, you should know. They ran into what they were trying to run from. Because <laughs> when you read the story, something interesting happens. It is, it is tragic when you read the story. But the Bible says that they moved to Moab and not long after moving to Moab, Imelech dies. He leaves his wife and his two sons. And then the Bible says, and sooner or later, uh, they take, the two sons take wives, and then eventually they die, Milan and Kilian. Now, what is interesting is Milan's name means sickly, and, and Kilian's name means puny. So he made, Imelech made a trip with his two sons who were weak, and sickly and puny. They didn't have the capacity to withstand the trials and the burdens of a travel and a trip. And so not only does he die, but they end up losing their life and they do it all in Moab. Could you and I often run into what we're trying to run from? They were trying to avoid death and ended up dying. Because they were walking by sight and not by faith. That his name means God is king, but he obviously didn't have enough confidence in God to stay in Bethlehem of Judah. He backs up and moves to Moab. And while he's in Moab, he loses his life. His sons lose their life. They suffer tragically. And so now his wife is left and they got the two daughter-in-laws, Ophrah and Ruth. So you consider the choices that he makes. You consider the consequences. But for us today, I want you to really think about what are the critical lessons for you and I. What are the things that you and I should take from the choices of, of, of Imelech and the, and, and the decision that he makes? Because the Bible declares that all of the things that have been written down in the book have been written for our, for our edification. That in other words, we ought to learn from the mistakes that they made. So what do we learn? Number one, we learn don't panic. Don't be like the cowboy in the old west who noticed something moving at the end of his bunk and shoots and he shoots his foot. Child of God, don't shoot your foot because you're panicking. You got to know that no matter what life brings to you, you got a God who loves you, who cares about you, and who's watching over you, who is superintending the affairs of your life. If you do this and type into the chat, don't panic. 
Don't panic. Don't you lose it. Don't you lose your cool. Don't you lose your don't you don't don't you lose your your faith. Stay still. Listen, don't panic. I know things are looking rough right now. I, I know things are looking tough in the economy. I know in the government is going crazy. I know stuff the world is going crazy. Shootings on every hand. You don't know whether to go to the mall or not. You don't know whether to go to the theater or not. You don't know if going to the grocery store is going to be your last year. Things have gotten crazy, but whatever you do, don't you panic. Why? Because like Emelec, God is king. He is king. And he got the whole world in his hands. I know things look crazy, but I got good news for you. He hadn't given up the throne. He hadn't advocated his seat. He hadn't, he hadn't, he hadn't, he hadn't left the world to run on its own. He is still in charge. So I need to encourage you. Number one, don't you panic. Don't panic. Number two, write it down, type it into the chat. Stay put. <laughs> Stay put. I know that's not that's the last piece of advice you wanted to hear. <laughs> Stay put. Moving could be detrimental. It could be costly. Stay put. Stay in the place that God has promised to bless. Bethlehem of Judah was the place of promise. There was no promise attached to Moab. Bethlehem of Judah was the place of promise. It would be, it is the place known as the house of bread. A little, let me quickly fast forward. Quickly fast forward. It is the place of promise. Not only do we find out in verse 6 that God looked favorably upon his people and blessed them and provided bread for them. There was a season of famine. And you got to remember that, 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 that famine, according to this text, the famine was only for a season. So you got to stay put because you will mess around and make a permanent decision on a temporary situation. You'll pack up and move and leave and you'll make a permanent decision on a temporary situation. And if you can be honest with me in the chat and say, Pastor, I've been there. I've made some, I've made some, some permanent decisions on some temporary situations. The truth of the matter is some of us are living right now with decisions we made that have become permanent that were, where were on situations that were only temporary. So don't you panic. Stay put. Stay in the place that God promised to bless. Because not only do we find in verse 6 that he blesses his people and provides them with bread, it becomes a motivation for Naomi and, and Ruth and, and, uh, to go back to Bethlehem of Judah. But you fast forward it. About another uh, 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 a thousand plus years and, and you will discover that Bethlehem becomes the place where God provides for all of us. Because you do know Bethlehem of Judah means house of bread. Well, do you, you know who was born in Bethlehem, right? The bread of life. And so it is a place of provision. So don't you move from the place that God has promised to bless. Because whatever is going on now is only temporary. If you can type that in the chat, it's only temporary. It's a, it's a season. It will not last always. So don't panic. Stay put. And here's the last thing. Just trust God. I know that sounds, that sounds so elementary, and I wish I had something deep and heavy for you on this sabbatical Sunday, but that's when I came to tell you, trust. Trust God. Trust the plan of God. Trust the promises of God. Trust the purposes of God. Trust God. Don't let us be like Imelech and guilty. Though his name means God is king, he doesn't live like God is king. 
Could you and I be found guilty of putting our trust in what we see and not in the Savior? Can you and I be guilty of putting our trust and confidence in the things around us and moving too quickly and shooting ourselves in the foot because we haven't simply learned just to trust God. Trust him and do not doubt because God will surely work things out. When you and I learn to trust him, he will, he will prove himself. And I know I'm talking to some people who are watching me online who know that when you lean in on God, when you rest on God, when you put all your weight on God, that's what it means to trust. It means to put all of your cares. The Bible says cast all of your cares upon him. Why? Because he cares for you. You and I got to learn to trust him. What reason do we have not to trust him? Every time we turn around, he keeps on coming through. Every time we think about it, he shows up on time. There has not been one moment in your life where God has abandoned you and walked away from you. There have been some painful moments. There have been some difficult moments. There have been some hard moments. But the truth of the matter is there has never been a moment that God has abandoned you or failed you he is a God who cannot fail and so you and I have to learn how to simply put our trust in him trust in him with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all of your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths Imelech's life is a lesson. He learned the hard way. In many ways, he burned his hand on the stove so we don't have to. So my encouragement to you on this day, on this sabbatical, don't panic. Stay put. Trust God. Don't panic. Stay put. Trust God. Don't panic. Stay put. Trust God. Let's pray. God, we love you today. And we thank you. Help us not to panic. Don't let us be like the cowboy who ends up shooting ourselves in, in, our, in the foot because we reacted too quickly. We made a rash decision and now we're regretting the decision we made. Help us to not make a permanent decision on a temporary situation. Famines are seasonal. Heartbreak, seasonal. Disappointments, seasonal. So help us not to panic. Help us to stay put. Help us to stay in the place of blessing. For each of us, you have designed the place of blessing where you will provide for us, where you will care for us. And that place is right in the middle of your will. There is no safer place to be than in the middle of your will. If, if it's 50 miles outside of your will, that's a dangerous place. So help us to stay right in the middle of your will. We don't want to exchange a famine for three funerals. He left a place of famine, but he didn't make it back. His sons didn't make it back. And the choices we make not only impact us, they impact our generations to come. And they may not survive the move. So help us to stay put. And help us to trust you. And never doubt that your plan is perfect. In 
Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you, family. Thank you for taking the time to, to join uh, us today online. I am super excited um, that you've taken this time. And I want you to join us next week for Family and Friends Day. I'm super, I'm super hyped. Uh, we've got special guests that are going to be here. And I want you to be present uh, as we celebrate the goodness of our God. There's going to be a few things that are coming across the screen to remind you. Don't forget to join us for our prayer time. Um, and then don't forget for next Sunday. Now, finally, but certainly not lastly, and that is giving. It is an opportunity now for you to sow into the church and into the ministry. You know, lately there's been a whole lot of talk about giving and tithing. Social media has been a buzz about it because of certain comments that were made. But you know, this idea of tithing really doesn't begin under the law. It began before the law. When you read your Bible, you'll discover the story of Abraham and Melchizedek. Melchizedek was a high priest, and Abraham has success in a battle. God gives him victory, and he, the Bible says, and he pays tithes to Melchizedek before the law. So what does that mean? It means tithing is literally an expression of my gratefulness and my trust in God. And it says, God, I thank you for the victory. And by giving you the 10th, the I'm thanking you not only for the victory, but I'm believing you for the future. So would you take a moment, and there's five ways you can give. Would you take a moment and sow into the church and to the ministry? I'm believing God is going to bless your life abundantly above all you can ask or think. So thank you so much for your gifts, for your contributions. I love you. Be blessed. Have a great Sunday.